So there you have it. That is Cornish Fry taken to another level. Hi everyone, welcome to Backyard Chef. I'm Rick. Today we're making a Cornish raw fry. We're in Cornwall. Now this is a, a fantastic stir-fry type recipe. Delicious as a side dish or even as a breakfast dish. I have a swede which I'm going to be including. Now some people won't put the swede in, they go for potatoes and onions and bacon. That's up to them. I'm going to go more traditional and I'm going to put a swede in. Okay, so let's show you how to do it. Come on. So my recipe calls for swede. Oh, that doesn't look very good. That's okay. So we just need to take off the outer skin down to the flesh. Now I'm going to slice my veg, you know, some people will just cube it. We are cutting it like that and then I'm coming through there like that. Nice and steady. And I will be doing the same with the potatoes. Potatoes, I've already started just to make it quicker. I've peeled the potatoes. We're going to come straight through there and we're going to slice exactly the same as that swede. You can cube these if you so wish, that's up to you. You know, that's your choice. I'm going to chuck those in there. We've got quite a lot of potatoes because that's our filler if you like. And we've got our swede there for that little bit of contrasting flavour and to keep it Cornish. So there we have our veggies. I already have some diced up onion. I've diced it up already just to make it a little bit quicker. And we've got some bacon. Now this is probably not the same as English bacon. However, it's bacon. Bacon cubed. Now you can cube up spam, ham, bacon. Up to you. Traditionally bacon bacon lardons or bacon bits like that however the choice is yours okay i don't get hung up on stuff like that somebody else might okay so this is bacon and all we're going to do is start to fry the bacon off for this one i'm going to use a little bit of butter in there you know butter is optional you don't have to use it we are going to eat this sort of vegetable bacon stir fry now you can use lard, don't worry about it. You can use any fats that you so wish. You can use vegetable oil, that's up to you. So I've got a flame on, nice and steady. Right, for our bacon then, it has to be fried off in the pan. Now what I will be doing is taking this bacon out after it's fried. We'll leave all the bacon fat or anything else that's in there and then we'll start to fry off the onions. That choice is yours. You could leave the bacon in, but I'm certain this type of bacon is just going to disappear into the pan. So we'll just give it a little stir fry. And this is smoky bacon as well. It's already got a fantastic smoky smell coming out of there. So just keep your bacon moving around in the pan. We're trying to extract as much of that oil, juice, fat that we can get out of there because that's going to be our flavouring. Okay, for me that is just perfectly perfectly cooked now we need to take that bacon out of there however we need to leave all that oil in there we want to use that oil for our cooking
And this bacon is going to be returned to the pan when we've got the veggies done. Okay, so we want to be going in there with our onions. Nice little bit of a stir down there, in there with that lovely bacon fat. Now there's no need to season at this point. We're going to season when we put the potatoes in. And the swede. So just give that a little stirring in there. Some people cook the onions down a long way. That's up to you. You know, I'm not particularly bothered about that because you're going to be cooking in there anyway. As long as you start to release that onion flavour in there, just a tiny bit of cooking on there. That's all we need. Now I probably differ to everybody else, but we're going in there with our potatoes and our swede. And we're going to stir fry it for about five minutes in there to start softening it up. Now we want to season, but we don't want to go too much with the salt if the bacon carries salt. So we just want a little bit of salt in there. And we want some black pepper. Now, it's a good amount of black pepper for me. Optional, whatever you want to put in. And we want to give that a little mix in. Start to cook it down in there. Traditionally, water fluid was not used in this dish. It is nowadays, you know, people want to make sure that the, the veg is cooked off and everything. So water's used, veg stock. People have tried to make sure that all the veggies are soft and cooked through. I understand that. But traditionally it would have just been stirred like this. Probably had a lid on. Every couple of minutes the lid would be off and it would be stirred through. And you cannot put any bacon next to me. <laughs> The secret to this really is not to rush. You know, if you try to rush cook that through, you're going, you will have raw vegetables in there. You cook it nice and slow, it will cook through eventually, and hopefully with the onions and the sweet potatoes, it should release enough fluid into the pan. It should be okay. Well, we've got the veg stock on standby. So as you can see in the bottom of this pan, we're getting a nice starchy type fluid forming. <laughs> so you could really just cook this down and down and down. Or you could add the fluid. Entirely up to you. So we're going to keep cooking for a five minutes or so. And then if we have to speed it up for speed cooking, we'll add a little bit of fluid to that. So it steams and cooks the veg. So cooking this way then, it is a slow cook method. You know, if you put water in and boiled it up and you boiled all your veg in there, or even chicken stock or veg stock, it would cook quicker. That is the only drawback with cooking it a little bit more traditional without adding the water. But you know, it'll get there. And what we're looking to do, we're looking to get this swede and potato tender in here before adding the bacon back in. And then we'll stir all the bacon through, whack up the heat and brown it off. Okay, when we've got our veggies softening like that, it's time to chuck back in the bacon. Stir it all through. No lid on now, so we haven't used that, that uh, veg stock. We've cooked it all like this. So stir it all through in there. And then we need to 
dry it out a bit in the pan. We want to actually cook off some of that fluid now and get a bit of a crust on the bottom. Now, if you want to season any more, you can do so, or you can wait till you serve and obviously you can season away. But now we need to be turning the flame up just a little bit higher and we need to try and dry out as much as we can and brown. Okay, look, you can see this is starting to brown off on there. Now, this is ready to go. This is Cornish fry already made. Now, so that's Cornish fry made. Serve with a fried egg, serve anything, serve with some bread. You can see we're getting a nice crust on there. Look, it's browned up lovely. I'm going to take some of that out of there, put it in this bowl. I want to do something different. This is an optional step. You wouldn't probably do this next step. You would just serve it like that for breakfast or as a side dish. I'm just gonna do something a little bit different. I've got one of these cake tins here, a loose bottom tin. I've got some butter and we're just going to rub that on there and round the sides. We're going to take our little pan there and we're going to take our fry mixture and we're going to put it in there. And yes, I know you wouldn't do this normally, but let's get that in there like that. Back in your pan with a little bit of butter. Not much, just enough in there. We're going with the flame on. And we're gonna take our Cornish fry. And we're gonna invert that in our pan. So we're gonna turn down the heat a little minute and we're gonna cook the bottom. Pull your lid on, help it steam in there a little minute. What we're hoping for is this cake tin to actually solidify the outside a little bit. But we're gonna get a browning on the bottom. And then we're gonna take that out of there and serve it up. The lid off. To take it out then, we're gonna need a cloth, obviously, because this thing is red hot. So I'll put a cloth on. We're going to take it out like that, turn it over. We've got this lovely brown topping on there, look. Can you see that? I'm going to take our plate. I'm going to turn it over on our plate, like that. Now you wouldn't do anything like this. This is taking it to some other level that you probably don't want to do. <laughs> Okay, so we need to be taking that off there, just with a fork. Lift it up gently, straight up. And because it's a loose bottom tin, just run that under there so nothing comes off. There we go. That is Cornish Fry. So there you have it. That is Cornish fry taken to another level. Now for me, a little bit of pepper. And then a little bit of, let's crack it open.
So there we have it, Cornish fry to a slightly different level. Now you don't have to go to the bother of plating it up like that, that is entirely up to you. What does it taste like? We're going to have to give it a try. <laughs> oh come on, in there. Layers of potato, swede, bacon. <laughs> oh man, that is absolutely flipping awesome. Oh, oh, oh. That is really good. That is really, really good. Oh, the potatoes and the swede. You've just got that little bit of crunch left in there. You've got that onion flavor coming through with that smoky bacon and a little drizzle of egg. Proper quality. That is absolutely amazing. That is Cornish raw fry made. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe, share with your friends, all that kind of stuff. Catch you in the next video.